Hi everyone, this video will be a devlog about the thing that I did today. I recently read about this book Code the Classics. I was about to buy it, but then I learned that the whole source code is available on GitHub. Although it's in Python, I didn't mind, I wanted to port this to Unity. Through the GitHub page I learned that the whole book is actually a free download. That's the book right here and what I'm really interested in is this Substitute Soccer, which is a sensible soccer clone. And you get some info about the code, not too much, and some background about the game, not too much either, but enough to get me hooked. And um, really, there's like dozens of pages of code listings in here in the day and age of GitHub. Why? Why? <laughs> Minus the code, the book is maybe 50 pages long. So I wanted to look this up on YouTube and see what it looks like. And yeah, it's pretty much like the old sensible soccer. Minus the goalkeepers, obviously. But it would be a fun experience to add them back in, of course. I want to show you what I did today. This is basically my, my super simple setup. I have a floor, which is just a plane with grass on it and a physics material. And I have a ball right here and two stand-ins for players. All I can do when I run this is I can shoot at a fixed rate and angle, but I can also swill the ball and that makes it much more interesting. And I got some self-made sounds for hitting the post. Already fun to play around with this thing. And I can imagine this will be a fun experience. One of the things that I'm planning is I want to try what happens if I use a soft body for the ball. I have the OB soft body physics package. I want to use OB cloth for the net and see how that looks like. And maybe I can find some use for ropes and fluids as well. Players got a drink, you know. The entire behavior was scripted in Node Canvas using behavior trees and state machines. I was really amazed how much faster this was than coding just because i mean i'll show you if i create a script in here uh, c sharp script and then compiling 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 see it's compiling compiling yeah oh god why why is it doing all that stuff this is what happens every time you change a script and it just it's like three four five six Seven, normally it shouldn't take more than two or three, but even three seconds are taking way too long compared to instantly seeing changes and being able to make changes to your prototype at runtime. And that's why I use Node Canvas here. Let me real quick show you what I did. I have this prototype controls. It's a behavior tree. We start at the start, then we go to the kick phase. This simply checks for the fire down input. Um, I'm using a new input system here. And when that occurs, I just add a force to the ball. Then it goes over to the next part of the sequence, which is a parallel node that runs all these three things in parallel. And what they do is they optionally check if the left aftertouch or the right aftertouch buttons are pressed. I have mapped this to buttons right now because it was just easier. If they are pressed, then a force to the left or to the right is added until the timeout happens. So after a quarter second this whole thing ends and then we are back to kicking and that allows us to swill the ball basically the after touch hit and press d and it goes to the left and press s and it goes to the right and bam and we get the good old sensible soccer feeling Pew. I love hitting the posts. I don't know why, but this is always excellent, hitting the post. Yeah, as for sounds, I found this tool called Chiptone, which is really awesome. It's a web page, and I put the actual app over here. So you have some presets in the generator that make some sounds of certain kinds. And if you find something that you like, you may adjust the pitch and then some other values. Ouch, ouch, stop it. Yeah, you should know what you're doing. Quite fun to experiment. So that's how I made the 
goalpost hit sound. As for playing the sounds, this is just a state machine on the ball that checks if the collision enters a collision with the goalpost tag, and then it plays this sound, and if it has a general collision, except for the goalpost tag collision, then it plays the snake drum, which is the ball hits the ground sound. Something I found important was to get the lights real nice, like, um, you know, four-way shadows that you have in a stadium with the lights on. You can see this is coming across real nicely. Just four spotlights in the corners. Nice four-way shadow effect. Uh, I have to work on the dimensions, obviously. But yeah, I made a goal out of three cylinders. Also, notice how I made the goalposts not round, but like ellip ellipsic, ellipsoid. They're not round. They're really not round the way they are for real. I mean, you got to acknowledge these details. So I didn't even use ProBuilder for that. So likewise for the whole stadium. <laughs> it's not much to look at. Of course, the pitch isn't even complete yet. It's just about hitting the ball right now and, and uh, aiming at the goal. The rest will come later. So what needs to be done in this game? So uh, obviously I need to have uh, two teams, 11 players, a goalkeeper, the whole rules, um, the ball going into the goal, outside the, the play field, etc., etc. There will be some fun things to do and I can add them one by one. I'll show you what I did in a couple more videos and see where it takes us. Oh, <laughs> right in front of the camera. Of course we need a scrolling camera and player controls and two-player mode and obviously leaks. Yeah, I recently wrote this um, leak system where you can have uh, several leagues with uh, teams playing against each other. The uh, matches are simulated based on the strength of the individual teams. It's just a simple value. I was mainly interested in getting the results as realistic as possible. And I think this worked out quite well. But yeah, you can see in the left, I've simulated a whole season. Let's see, that's German first league, uh, last match day. Munich is in front, obviously. This uh, value, the fitness, that's the actual uh, team strength that I use to simulate the matches. There's nothing more. And the results are pretty convincing. So you have Munich, obviously, at the front, Leipzig, Dortmund as well, Wolfsburg. And then you have the, well, the lesser known teams. They are going to be relegated to the second league. So if I continue running this, I think I set it up to simulate one season after another. We have once again Munich winning this league. Too bad for Dortmund. And we can run this again and see that Munich is... Oh no! Munich is not winner of Leipzig won their first season and they lost their last match apparently. So let's try another Munich back at the top as it should be. And Dortmund as the runner-up. And Dortmund missed their chance of winning the league in the last match. Yeah, it'll be fun to combine those two experiments together. It's also a great learning experience for me in regards of Node Canvas. There'll be more Node Canvas tutorial videos coming from me as well. So I hope to see you back in the next videos, obviously. If you liked the video, like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, obviously. I obviously, too much obviously. So I hope you had fun. Enjoy your meal. Oh God, it's way too late. I shouldn't be recording videos anymore <laughs> at this point in time. I hope you gain something from this video. And if you do, come back for the next one. Until then, see you. Bye bye. Nice ball. <laughs> Prototyping is so much fun. Prototyping has never been so much fun. <laughs>